We had John Thompson on. It was like, if not every year, it was every other year. The last time I spoke to him was April 2nd of 2018. He had joined us. He always uh, did the tournament for Westwood One, and then we would get Coach on. And uh, I asked him why he retired from coaching. Here is Big John. The preparation for the game is probably one of the most difficult things that I found. And, and when I got to the point of feeling it was me and not the kids, I said, it's time to get the hell out of here, you know, with it. And, and it comes to that point, particularly with the practices, because you have to get involved with so many personal things as well as getting involved with the game itself. And But as far as the game is concerned, if I could just show up for the game and coach and, and coach the game, heck, I could do that now. And Coach would always have the towel on his shoulder. And he told us the story that his mom, when she was in the kitchen cooking, would always have a towel on her shoulder. And John just started doing that subconsciously. And then I think it turned out to be just a great acknowledgement or tribute to his mom, who would have the towel. No, I didn't keep any special one, you know. Uh, and, and I got that from my mom in the kitchen. You know, people ask me about the towel. You know, I had the towel on my shoulder before I realized it was on my shoulder because I did it habitually. When my mom worked around the house, she would always have a, a towel strung over her shoulders. And now I started doing it until people started to say, you know, well, he's walking around. Now, people walk up to me th- th- today and ask me, where's the towel? <laughs> you know, I, I have no idea where the towel was. I didn't have one special one. <laughs> well, Guy Lewis had a, a special one, right? He had that, that, that checkered towel that that he would have yeah he did he did and jerry talk used to always yeah. have one that he bit on and chew <laughs> on and you know <laughs> you know all the time and, and those are little things you know you do sometimes without realizing it and then it becomes a habit and, and, and most athletes are very superstitious most coaches are very if i won a big game and knew i had you know, uh, a towel on my shoulder you can believe me i wouldn't take the towel <laughs> off again <laughs> John Thompson was, uh, he told a story about 9-11. And I think he initially told this on Jim Rome's show. And uh, he said that back in 2001, he was set to fly to New York to do a studio interview. And Thompson wanted to be able to do the interview with Jim Rome and still make a friend's birthday party in Las Vegas on September 13th. So he booked a ticket on American Airlines Flight 77. That departed on September 11th. That didn't work for the show. And Jim Rome's producer, Danny Schwartz, asked Thompson to instead push his flight back to September 12th. Thompson didn't like the change and told Schwartz. uh, So Schwartz persisted. Thompson relented. After the events of 9-11, Thompson's house is near the Pentagon. He felt Flight 77's impact at his house. That morning, it crashed into the Pentagon. That's when John Thompson realized that he would have been on that flight. So, interesting man. Uh, When I first started out at CNN in the early 80s, and once a year, we would go to Georgetown, and we would do interviews. Now, I never got to interview Ewing when he was playing there. They, They didn't let their players, they weren't available to the media. And I would sit down with Coach Thompson, and that would be it. We'd do a profile on Georgetown. But I got to cover the Big East because I was uh, uh, located in New York, in Midtown Manhattan. We were right across from the Garden at Five Penn Plaza. And I got to cover the Big East tournament. Uh, We did stories on Chris Mullen, Mark Jackson, uh, Louis Carnesecca, uh, Syracuse. I covered Raleigh Massimino and Villanova when they won the national title. That parade, I went to it. you know, I was just very, very fortunate to be around a magical time with college basketball. But Coach, could in, he'd intimidate, no doubt about it. He tried to intimidate you. And then after a while, I saw him at a Final Four. And he was friends with Sonny Vaccaro, the guy who started the whole Nike, Michael Jordan shoe career. And Sonny had told John about me and, That, you know, you should get to know him. You know, his college basketball. And Coach was uh, outside. He was in a hotel lobby. And that big booming voice. And he says to me, I'm told I'm supposed to get to know you. 
Now, there are all these other coaches and people around, and I, I, I was shocked. I was like, um, I said, hey, coach. So here he is, 6'10", 300 pounds. And then he says it one more time. I'm supposed to get to know you. And I said, well, I'd love to. He goes, why do I, why do I need to get to know you? I said, well, you know, I love the game. I follow the game. And um, then after that, I, I would see him or he would, he would seek me out or he would see me come over and say hello. And that was always the running joke. I'm supposed to get to know you. And we eventually had good conversations after that. But I remember in 2007, we're in Washington, D.C., and we're starting this show. And I'm at the st radio station he works at. And he was doing a show right after ours. And he came in. And when he walked in the, through the doorway, you couldn't see any light around the doorway. It was just John was walking through the door. And, you know, once you realize that he was trying to intimidate you, but deep down, you know, he meant well, then you could have a conversation. You could joke with him. You could have a conversation with him. And I think getting to know Patrick Ewing as well, uh, you know, it was us against the world. It truly was the way Georgetown and the way John positioned his team. He, he told those kids, it's us against the world. And they bought into it. So rest in peace, big man. Big John.